what is up my Nakama? So my name is Daniel and I'm a current second year medical student and for the past 365 days I've been doing Anki consistently with no breaks at all, which is absolutely nuts. <laughs> but in this video basically I wanted to share some of my struggles that I've encountered with Anki and some high yield tips that will make your Anki experience better in my opinion. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so just to quickly explain what Anki is, if it's the first time that you're hearing about this, basically it's a software-based flashcard program, kind of similar to Quizlet, where it uses space repetition in order to learn vast amounts of information um, and keep it in your memory for a long period of time. So basically what that means is that if you get a card right, for example, like a regular front-to-back flashcard, then you will see that card again in three days. And then if you get it right again in three days, then you will see it in six days. And then if you get it right in six days, you'll see it maybe a month ahead or something, whatever you set your interval to. But basically, as you get the card right again and again, you're gonna see it less and less often because you probably know that card and it's stuck in your memory. And this is how Anki uses space repetition. And it is really important in medical school in my opinion, because unlike university, where you had different classes like English and history and then some science courses maybe, um, and you finish one of those courses, you probably forgot all of the information that you learned. Like if you took some writing course, like I doubt you remember exactly what all your essays were about from freshman year of college. But in medical school though, you kind of have to remember everything you learned from day one because everything you learn from day one, like in anatomy and in your pathology courses, is gonna be relevant throughout your career in medical school and throughout your career as a physician. So everything I've learned since day one of medical school, I've pretty much committed to memory and hopefully this will help me do well on step one and also just be a good physician overall. And also just in general, I think it's kind of hard to plan out your studying with the vast amounts of information that medical school throws at you. For example, like if you've already learned three blocks of material and you're on your fourth block in medical school, it's kind of hard to know for exactly what time and how much you should review your previous three blocks. But Anki basically does this for you. So I never choose what reviews to do. Anki does that in the background. And generally I have a mix of material that I review. And so that's a great way to kind of keep up with the old material while staying consistent with whatever new block you're currently on. All right, so now that I've discussed kind of what Anki is and why I find it useful for medical school, I wanted to spend the rest of this video sharing um, some tips and insights that I have in order for Anki to work the best for you, um, in my opinion, of course. I mean, everyone uses Anki differently. This is just my opinion, but these are kind of sort of general principles that I think everyone should be doing. So the first topic that I wanted to discuss in regards to Anki is consistency because consistency is king with Anki. There's a lot of people I find that sometimes miss their reviews or skip a day here and there. And in the long run, I think this is just working against you. Um, because first of all, if you skip your reviews, obviously those reviews are gonna pile up for the next day. And then if you skip that day too, you're just gonna have even more reviews to do. And in the long term, you'll actually end up having more work to do than if you were to just consistently do Anki every day. For example, if you had a day where you didn't do Anki for a week and then you decided to revisit it, you might have like 5,000 or 6,000 reviews to do in that day. And that day is just gonna be awful. Like, trust me, you don't wanna be there. But if you did Anki consistently for that week, you'd probably have around 500 to 800 reviews, which is pretty manageable. And just a quick tip, in order to hold yourself accountable for being consistent, just designate a time during the day that is dedicated for your Anki reviews. So for me, I choose the morning. It's like the very first thing that I do before I do any additional studying. And I like to do this because then I don't have to worry about doing my Anki reviews for the rest of the day. It's not like looming over my head while I'm trying to do other things throughout the day. Um, so I definitely recommend just maybe getting it out of the way in the morning so that then you don't have to worry about your reviews um, for the rest of the day. And also if you're not doing your Anki reviews consistently and not committing to doing Anki every single day, then you're kind of destroying the purpose of the space repetition algorithm because it works best if you do it every day um, because then you know the program knows how many cards that you've answered correctly um, for the current day that you're on and then it can push those cards into the future. Um, but if you skip days, it kind of messes around with the algorithm to some extent um, because then like you have a lot more cards piled up on one day when those reviews could have been spaced out more efficiently. Um, so yeah, just, if you do commit to Anki, commit to it fully 100%. Don't just go like 50% and do reviews every other day. 
Um, do it every single day and trust me, like the benefits you will see pay off if you've been doing it for a year. Like I've become somewhat of a god of Anki at this point. Like my reviews are super fast. Uh, I answer the cards correctly because they're really sort of ingrained into my memory. And I'm just um, hopeful that this will pay off for my step one examination. Uh, but we'll see. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. So the second point that I wanted to bring up that is kind of related to consistency is to add new cards periodically, at least try and add new cards every day. So just as important as it is to review your old cards, it's also important to add new cards. And I kind of made this mistake during my first few exams of medical school. Basically, I kind of waited till almost the end of the unit to pile on all of the new cards. And to some extent, I kind of didn't know how to use Anki in particular, and I didn't realize that there was still a ton of unsuspended cards left in my pre-made deck that I could have um, unsuspended and, and seen them beforehand. But basically, like, I had like a thousand to two thousand unsuspended cards left before my exam. And although I was doing my reviews consistently, I wasn't periodically adding those new cards to my deck as I was doing my reviews. So I'd highly recommend whether you know exactly how many cards you're gonna have before an exam, you can divide by the number of days before your exam, how many cards you're gonna do each day. Or what I like to do personally is just, as I learn the material, I unsuspend the card and hopefully you end up unsuspending all the cards beforehand. And what I recommend is to at least have all of the relevant cards related to the current material that you're on unsuspended at least five to six days before your exam. And the purpose of this is so that first, at least the space repetition algorithm can kick in somewhat. Um, it gives you kind of a five to six day buffer window. And also it gives you enough time to actually do practice questions and practice tests, which in my opinion is kind of the best way to actually test your knowledge of the material. And that brings me to my third point, which is that Anki is a memorization tool and not a learning tool. So once again, I kind of made this mistake during my first few exams of medical school. Basically, I scored a little bit lower because I solely relied on Anki and I didn't do enough practice questions to actually apply and test my knowledge of the material. Now, the amazing thing about Anki is that over the long term, certain cards will connect with each other that you didn't even realize there was a connection there. So for example, like way before my cardiology unit, I had biochemistry in medical school and I unsuspended a card that was related to a certain enzymatic reaction. Like I had to remember what the enzyme was, what the substrate was, and what the final product was. And then a few months later, when I had my cardiology unit, we were learning about certain cardiac abnormalities. Um, and there was one like inherited genetic disorder that was related to that same enzymatic reaction that I had. Basically that enzymatic reaction stopped working and that is what led to the pathology and the clinical symptoms of that inherited disorder. And although these two cards were separated in time by like a few months, because I remembered what that biochemistry card was, I was able to easily answer um, the cardiac abnormalities that would happen with this inherited pathology. And this is just an example of how the more cards you learn and the more information you learn, the stronger the connections and the integrations will be um, between all of the cards that are in your deck. Um, but although these connections and integrations can happen, it's no substitute for actually applying that knowledge on a practice test. Um, for example, like even though I knew that connection, sometimes there's like even second or third order questions in practice banks and practice questions that are kind of difficult to answer. And that's why I kind of recommend using Anki as like a storage of all the necessary information and all the high yield knowledge and then actually doing practice tests to see if you can apply that knowledge. Because even if you're great at Anki and you feel like you've memorized all these facts, sometimes the test will roll around and it'll just slap you on the face. <laughs> you don't even know what happened, um, which is why I not just recommend, but you have to do practice questions, in my opinion, in order to do well on medical school examinations. And hopefully whatever university or medical school you go to supplies some free question banks. Otherwise, I would say it is worth investing in some additional practice banks um, if you have the money to do so. Okay, so my final tip that I wanted to leave you all is to make use of the extra field section in Anki. So when I first used Anki, I would try and blaze through my reviews. And especially like if I missed a question, I kept missing it over and over again. I would just keep hitting the again button until I memorized that fact. But I didn't really learn that fact. I would just 
memorize the key buzzword um, or whatever the closed deletion was, but I wouldn't actually be learning the information. Like I wouldn't have a good grasp or understanding of the material. Um, and that's how I approached Anki for the first few months I used it. Um, but then I realized that I could just easily make use of the extra field section. Um, so what the extra field section is, by the way, is when you answer a card, usually you can click a button. For me, it's like H, or you can just click um, the extra field section. Um, and if you have Zanki or the Anki deck, basically the extra field section includes a screenshot of like either the first A chapter or some material they feel like goes along with the card. And so if you miss the card, what you can quickly do is do like a mini review of that topic and kind of brush up on the material. And this is really convenient because rather than opening up your textbook or trying to find the first aid chapter and page that's associated with the card, you can just quickly reveal the extra field section and just learn the material as best as you can um, so that hopefully you don't miss the card again. Um, and this is a great way to brush up on topics that you might not feel so confident in. And it's just a great and efficient way, in my opinion, to review material without opening up a ton of different resources because it's all like built in to Anki and into that specific card. So yes, definitely make use of the extra field section. Um, it'll help you in the long run. And you can even add your own information. Um, even with the pre-made decks, you can include some things that you think are important for you to know, or maybe some mnemonics that you personally use that um, you feel like would help you better memorize the material. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you learned something about Anki. And I hope all of you that are watching this that are considering doing Anki or are in medical school or whatever studies you're doing, um, I hope it works for you. Uh, feel free to leave any comments below about issues that I didn't address or just any questions about medical school studies or Anki in general. Stay strong, stay healthy, and as always, dot to bio.